Welcome to the Life Shine Generosity Project, where we promote reckless generosity. My name's John Witt, and I'm your host. And we encourage our guests to shine their light bright on their good deeds and glorify our Father in Heaven. Today our guest is Derek Wan, and Derek is the Southern California and Las Vegas Area Director for Lynx Players. Now, Lynx Players is a ministry to golfers, and I'm a golfer. And to be honest with you, Lynx Players is the foundational reason for my transformation. I didn't grow up in the church. I didn't learn about grace and mercy and all of that until I was 52. And uh, I thank God for that opportunity that I received back in 1952. And I'm very, very excited to introduce Derek Wong as our guest today. Derek, thanks for joining us. Hey, good to be with you, John. So Derek, um, I'm going to give you the the glory and the opportunity to kind of share what Lynx Players is. What do you do? Who do you serve? What are the kind of problems and issues and challenges that you deal with? Sure. Well, Lynx Players was actually started in the early 80s by two PGA professionals, Jim Hiskey and Wally Armstrong. And they felt like there was a need out there as professional golfers, how they would use their platform as professional golfers to reach golfers like you and I. And so they would set up these fellowships as they traveled around, uh, you know, the country. And through that, you know, Lynx Players was, was born. And I've been involved with Lynx Players actually probably for over 25 years and got their newsletter, and that was called the Lynx Letter, which was a magazine now that they created uh, actually in 2000. And those are magazines of just articles of players on the tour, both men and women. And those were just the good vehicle that we would give to people. And then when the website became very popular, we created the Lynx Players website, so lynxplayers.com. Uh -huh. And we have a lot of articles on the uh, website of just different players, but also different studies. You know, one of the things that we really push is fellowship. And Lynx, L-I-N-K-S, as you know, our logo, right, yeah. has five T's. And the pillars, as we call it, the five pillars, L, is love God and others. I is integrate Christ's reign and integrity into all of life. The N is networking together through the game of golf. And then K is kindling compassion for poor and needy. And I think when we think poor and needy, we think automatically financial. Right. But I say poor and needy in spirit. And that is something that where we get to really uh, minister and reach out to men and women like yourself when you first heard about Lynx players, mm -hmm. which is poor and needy in spirit. And I remember you always said, one thing you never realized is that you had a hole in your heart. And well, that was yeah. big. That, yeah. That, and, and so, you know, life is life. Yeah. And I had my issues and challenges. And, um, you know, when I discovered that that concept of grace and mercy, and it was actually Lynx players that was so helpful because it was at, it was in it was in the golfing community, a place mm -hmm. that I was comfortable, people I knew, I could ask questions, two-way conversation. It wasn't the same as going to church, uh, because church is kind of a one-way message, mm -hmm. right? And so I could ask questions and 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 uh, educate myself. And there, there's a whole story around why I was doing that. It's a relationship with my daughter it was really important to me to to go down that path. And if you're interested in that story, you can check it out on. Lifeshine.live. We'll give you details on that later. Um, but yeah. yeah, that was that was that was amazing. And you know, and I think for golfers, right? These are, you know, especially if you're at a private club, right? Mm -hmm. Money is not really the big issue. It's all that other stuff, mm -hmm. and that's where I think the spiritual gap, the spiritual hole, is a, is so big. Yeah. Because I, I certainly I didn't know how to fill it. Mm -hmm. I didn't didn't know what it was. So. Yeah. And, you know, I think uh, for you, as a good example, the S is sharing Christ with others. And when you got to meet one of our Lynx players on the golf course, of course, our tagline is changing the conversation. And what he did with you was he did change the conversation, if I remember. Oh, it was, it was, um, we're on the, I, this is so vivid. We're on the 16th hole, you know, hitting our approach shot to the green. Mm. And there's people on the green. We're waiting for it to clear. And he turns to me, Richard Jackson turns to me and says, what church do you go to? Now, he doesn't know any of my backstory and why I'm interested and why that makes sense or why that's going to resonate with me. But he just says, what church do you go to? And, and I explain that, you know, I didn't go to church, no pros and cons, just didn't grow up in the church. And then he explained Lynx, Lynx players. And in the back of my mind, I actually was seeking. I was looking for help in this space, uh, but I didn't know where to go. And it just kind of popped up. This is, this is God doing his thing. Um, 
And the very next week, I was playing golf, and another guy asked me the exact same question on the first hole. So I literally had the same conversation two weeks in a row. Um, but it doesn't, you know, I don't, I'm not here. Link, life shine generosity doesn't exist without that transformation from Lynx players way back then. Yeah, no, it's, it's a, your story is very, I, I, I love it because it's kind of why I call my, our sweet spot. You know, when you golf, you talk about the golf club having a sweet spot. And I would say Lynx players, that's our sweet spot, is how do we reach to men and women that are in these golf clubs that maybe never gone to church or never heard, uh, you know, about Jesus, and yet they don't want to be, you know, pound over the head with it, but it's through relationships, and that we're all about relationships. Relationships with each other, number one, but most importantly, a relationship with Jesus Christ. And again, for me, it was an opportunity to, and, and I knew some of these people, I just didn't know their faith, I didn't know their religion, this was an opportunity to, you know, ask questions and get deeper answers, and um, yeah, it was really, really, it, well, again, without it, it, I wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. So, um, so links, acronym, and um, the types of challenges, my challenge in particular, I was seeking, I needed to get smarter about the Bible, I needed to understand more, um, but I'm not the only one. I mean, there are a lot of challenges that Link solves. Yeah, you know, one of the things we do is we have a daily devotional as a, as a part of a, a tool or a resource that we send out Monday through Friday, and you can register, it's free on linksplayers.com, and just go to devotionals and subscribe. And Monday through Friday, you get a devotional that talks about golf and God. And what people learn, because they love the game of golf, the analogies. There's so many great parallels with life and golf. And so, uh, and of course, a lot of our fellowships use the Friday devotional because we make it uh, really easy for someone that we would call facilitate. Not have to be a Bible study teacher or right. a leader. You can facilitate and really go through the devotional. And then we have questions, right? that anybody can answer. Like, what is your favorite golf course? Or, you know, like this week was like, uh, do you ever dream you would be in a major, you know, championship, you know? Yeah, that's and, a dream. Yeah, <coughs> and so those are things that we try to engage both men and women in the fellowships, even though they are not knowledgeable of the Bible, but they can communicate and talk about golf. Well, golf is such has so many life lessons and you know, biblically, that's what the Bible's all about, is life lessons. Mm -hmm. And I, I've often referred to it in my coaching profession as, you know, the original mental health book, because they're all the different experiences that the characters in the Bible go through are just the same kind of stuff that we're all dealing with ourselves, mm -hmm. and how do we resolve it, what's the process? I mean, so, you know, you want to set up instructions on how things work, that, that's a really good tool for that. Um, in addition to the, the concept of faith and, you know, um, the promise that Jesus brings. Mm -hmm. um, the process for uh, finding or joining or becoming a member engaged with Lynx players, how does that work? Well, a lot of it is all about um, relationships and one of the things how uh, somebody asked me the other day that was a pastor of literally, a, he's connected with a church of 200 churches and one of his uh, pastor friend says, how come I've never heard about Lynx players? And I said, sometimes we're the best kept secret because it's really a one-on-one -on -one relationship first. It's like meeting someone uh, on the golf course and telling them about Lynx players. And then secondly is saying, hey, uh, we have fellowships in these different clubs. And the whole idea is inviting one by one. And it's not something we go out and advertise or promote. It's right. something that you have to find the right people uh, in a club that have a heart to say, yeah, I want to start a Lynx Fellowship at my club. Or they've experienced a Lynx Fellowship like yourself at mm -hmm. another club. And understanding that it's non-threatening, that's one of the things we want to make sure. It's really about, uh, again, establishing relationships with different golfers at your club. And one of the things I tell a lot of our Lynx players uh, is that we talk about the harvest field. In, in Luke 10, 2, talks about the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. And I tell a lot of our Lynx guys, you don't have to go to China, being Chinese, or Africa, 
but right here in your own backyard uh, at your golf club, that's a great harvest field. And so why not use that as a setting where you can invite your buddies that you play golf with to come to a Lynx Fellowship? And we are intentional about calling it a Lynx Fellowship because it's really about the fellowship. And you know, one thing people say is, well, you're very religious, Derek. I said, no, I'm about relationships, not about religion. Jesus was about relationships. relationships. Yes. And that's one of the things I believe Lynx players is really, uh, again, a, a safe environment for a, a lot of men and women who maybe either got turned off from the church growing up or have never been to church, but now they can come to a place that they can feel comfortable. Yeah, the, the golf club, golf course is a, a club is a comfortable spot. And, you know, again, I, I had met many of these guys in events or tournaments or just even played golf with them before, but I just had never had this kind of a conversation with before. So mm -hmm. it was it was really powerful for me. So uh, I, a quick question. How many how many um, how many fellowships do we have? Where are they? So we're across the United States. Uh, we're uh, around 300 uh, fellowships and growing. Uh, you know, one of the things, again, as we call it, it's about really, we call it organic, because it's really up to the Lord bringing the right people. And, and, and of course, more and more people are, are aware of now Lynx players. And, and as they do, they'll call one of the regional directors and they can go to our website. And our whole thing is we're here to help them start the fellowship. And once they get it going, what's great about it, we use a word called sustainability. And they're sustainable because they're run by the members. You know, you don't have to depend on a pastor leading it or a certain leader leading it. It's all run by the members. And that's what I, I love about uh, all the fellowships that I get to be a part of because these are all running and, you know, God willing, you know, I'll be here for a while. But if he takes me home tomorrow, yeah. these groups will still, still there. continue to meet. Yeah. So um, uh, success story, you know, mm -hmm. something, something special. And I'm certainly you've got several of them. Can you share one? Sure. You know, um, for me, you know, I, I've been in business. I had my own business for over 30 years. I was really blessed to be in, a, in an industry that was growing, which was the video game industry. Okay. And, yeah. uh, and you know, for me, it was like, okay, life was easy playing golf and, you know, uh, success was there. And uh, uh, when Lynx players, I had known about Lynx players and just so happened, um, uh, I was uh, at one of our clubs that I would belong to and I went to a study and I said, wow, this is great meeting at a country club because I was always involved in men's, you know, men's small groups church at my groups. church uh -huh, and, yeah. and promise keepers. And so I was involved in that. But to see men at the time in meeting in a literally they were meeting in a locker room and here in Palm Desert and uh, and sure enough, I got a chance to meet our president, Jeffrey Cranford, and at the time, our CEO, Jeff Hopper. And I had mentioned that I was serving on the elder board at our church, and I just rotated off. And they go, oh, we're looking for some new, uh, you know, some new board members. And so they invited me, and that's when I really fell in love. Uh, with the ministry, and then of course with my sales background, it was like, okay, how do we expand? How do we get this going? And this is where God really intervened. Uh, uh, we were looking for some regional directors. We had uh, our regional director in Texas, which was doing well, and we decided to hire a guy in Southeast and Southwest. And of course, I opened my mouth and said, oh, that would be a fun job. And Jeff and Cranford, they said, you're welcome. Yeah, right, George. And I go, <laughs> no, I don't think so. And, but I said something that I think all of us should be uh, willing to hear. It said calling. And I said, okay, I tell you what, give me a month and let me see if this is truly where God is calling me. And sure enough, uh, uh, I said, give me a month, right? So mm -hmm. first week, I asked my wife, by the way. Yeah, and I, and I being a sales guy, I said, I'm not going to sell my wife that, hey, I want this job, but I want God to speak to her if I should take this job. And sure enough, two weeks go by. I asked my wife, mm, not sure. Third week goes by, and literally, I get up 4 o'clock in the morning. It was like you speaking, speaking to me now. And literally, Jesus is saying, get out of the boat. And, of course, the inside joke is I also said, feed my sheep. And, you know, my friends at Lynx Players said, what is, you know, you know, get out of the boat, think of fish and sheep. That's the inside joke. But, yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but anyway, of, yeah. that for me, it was about feeding the sheep was my passion is how do I help 
literally men like yourselves grow in their walk with Jesus and their faith. And so I'm thinking, okay, and I hear that. And that morning I asked my wife, I go, hey, where are you with me coming on board with Lynx players? And she goes, I've been praying and yeah, if you feel called, let's go. So it so happened. 15 years now. It happened. Yeah. Well, that's, that's so often the case. So, so really, um, you know, if somebody was interested at learning more about Lynx players, go to lynxplayers.com. Mm -hmm. um, they could, there's certainly like, I know from my club, um, you know, we don't, you, you don't even necessarily have to play golf, but if you like to play golf, you want to learn, you're, you're certainly welcome to come visit us at Oregon Golf Club. Um, I think you could visit any one of the fellowships in that fashion. Yeah. And then you've got tools on how to start a Lynx fellowship at each of the clubs. So you could test one out, so to speak, and then figure it out and then go start your own. Yeah. You know, I, I think the whole idea is we're, it's about inclusive, not exclusive. And I think Jesus was that way. He was all about being inclusive. You know, he would go out to wherever parts of the world and just, you know, be able to just share his love. And that's really, I believe, what Lynx players and what Lynx fellowships are about doing is really reaching out to as many as they can. Have you ever been... Um Surprised, or has anybody told you about how surprised they were about something that they received because they joined Lynx players? Yeah, you know, in fact, it, like I said, it's organic because you just never know. And I, my role being 15 years and what I am blessed to do with Lynx players as an area director is meeting different men and women. And uh, sometimes it'll be like months, and believe it or not, in one case, it was like 14 years where finally someone, it was kind of like one of the things of timing. And that's why a lot of times we say it's God's timing, not our timing. It's God's will. Yeah, and, and so we can't put a, a timeline on when someone is ready and not ready. But then 14 years go by and all of a sudden they're ready. Yeah, and it was because of our logo. Uh, this gentleman was playing in a golf tournament and he noticed uh, the logo and he said, Lynx players. And he said, oh, do you know Derek Wong? And sure enough, they started talking. Just so happened this gentleman just retired, did really well, and he just retired. And he said, you know, I'm looking for something to do. And sure enough, uh, he called me up and I remembered him from 14 years ago uh, up in the Bay Area. And sure enough, uh, he said, I'm ready to get something going. And sure enough, they're going. and. Uh, uh, men are, uh, are coming to the fellowship. I even got one of the wives called me a couple months ago and say, I want to start a women's fellowship too. And so we have women's fellowships that meet also in, in the clubs. And that's something that we're looking uh, uh, to grow as a ministry is really get more women involved with Lynx players. Well, there are women golfers too. I mean, oh. there's really no reason why we can't go down that path. Yeah. So. Well, if we switch the, uh, switch, the, switch the topic to generosity, mm -hmm. you know, I, and I remember um, when I was developing this podcast, I was developing the, the, the generosity, Life Shine Generosity program, I would reached out to you and I said, you know, so what's, what's the value and the benefit of generosity? Mm -hmm. And do you remember what you said? Mm -hmm. you, you, <laughs> you paraphrased the, um, the old uh, recycling bottle recycling model, right? So it used to be, and this is when I was growing up, I'm dating myself obviously, <laughs> but um, on the bottle, uh, it, would, it would say, on the bottom of the bottle, it would say no deposit, no return. No return. And generosity is how you're making those deposits. Mm -hmm. And the return is the blessings, the blessings mm -hmm. that come with it. Mm -hmm. And in, in your case, right, and you've been generous in many, many cases, what are, what are some of the blessings that you think you've received? I was on the elder board at our church and we had this big building campaign. And I remember I was, had to fill out a, a commitment card. And at the time, you know, business was good, life was good. And I thought, okay, let's, let's see where God, uh, you know, sort of like what I said in the scriptures about test me. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, Lord, so I put this number down and I'm praying with my wife and we'll say, okay, we'll see what God does. And, and sure enough, you know, it was kind of like when you wrote the check, it was kind of like, uh, you know, the whole idea of being, uh, generosity is about uh, your heart, about saying that, you know, you want to do it from your heart, not because you have to, it's because you want to. 
And, and, and for me, when we wrote it, we were so excited that we were able to do it. And it was over above, you know, your normal tithing, which obviously yeah. we talk mm -hmm. about tithing. But uh, uh, for me and my wife, it was something that we got to be a part of. And, that, and I think that's the whole idea of generosity is, is when you give from your heart, you're part of that whole uh, thing that you're giving to. It's not just, just writing a check. It's right, you're, it, you're, you're, in this case, you're part of that, yeah. that capital campaign yeah. to expand the church. And, you know, he talks about being a cheerful giver, you know, and I think that's what the whole idea of being a cheerful giver is. You're giving it because after that, you do. You feel really cheerful, and God has blessed me more than I can ever, you know, imagine. And, and I would tell you that was something that, for me and my wife, was really a, a step, uh, a big step for us in our, in our journey. Well, you were okay. talking about Malachi. I forget the verse. I'm not as nearly as Malachi good. Malachi no. 310. Yeah. Test and it, me. This is test me, mm -hmm. right? God says, test me, and I will make it happen. I don't know the exact words. Yeah. Yeah. But um, in this case, you did. And did you, did, was there anything that happened to the business or to your life? I mean, other than the fact that you had a lot of joy from just being able to make this yeah. contribution, which I think is worth a lot all by itself. Mm -hmm. um, did you notice some things happen? Were you, did business did change? Did things happen or do anything happen there? Well, I think uh, what really more changed was that, you know, God does provide and God do is faithful. And it's for us to just trust him and test him. You know, that's the whole thing about Malachi 3. And he says, why, and nowhere else in the Bible does it say test him, by the way. In this, in this verse is very important because he says, Test me these things and see that, and he talks about tithes and offering, and people say, what is a tithe, you know? Of course, we, all, we say it's a tenth, you know? Uh, and I tell people, just start at it 1%. Is what it is, yeah. Ten, two percent, it doesn't matter, but start somewhere. And you'll see God's blessings, by the way, they're not always financial. Blessings was in my marriage, blessings was in our children, blessings was, yeah, uh, with relationships. And for me, more important, in ministry and coming on board with Lynx players. And that all was kind of the journey of the beginning of how I got to where I'm at today. Yeah, yeah. It is surprising, uh, generosity, living in the, you know, the law of abundance, so to speak, because God has, he provides. Yeah. Um, and, and trusting him. Sometimes that's the biggest check you ever wrote and then God somehow makes it work out. Mm -hmm. so. And the check is really, I think, it's just the, really the testing. You know, even in the Bible, it talks about uh, who gave the most. You know, but you look at the Pharisees. And mm -hmm. the, it was the widow's might. It was the lady that gave. For her, it was a lot. But in regards to the amount, it wasn't a lot if you compare it. But for her, it was all she had. As a percentage of what she had, yeah. she gave. And she gave from the heart. Yeah. yeah. So you know, let's talk. Let's shift into the uh, concept of, of non-financial generosity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what I learned too is your time and your talent. And one of the things we're doing at Links Players is we have a lot of men and women that have been very successful from the business standpoint. And how do you give it back? You know, we talk about pay it forward. You know, and so one of the things we look at is mentoring. You know, we started a program called the EE Project, which is the relationship between Elisha and Elijah. And the whole idea is that there are a lot of men and women uh, that uh, have a lot of talent that they've been through both ups and downs. Mm -hmm. You know, we learn probably more from our failures than we do from oh, our successes. Definitely, definitely. And so what we've been working with is an organization called College Golf Fellowship. A lot of the men and women tried to you know, they played college golf, but they weren't good enough to play professionally. So now they're pursuing their careers, uh, what they majored in. And like, for example, accounting, if someone wants to be a CPA, so we try to connect them with uh, someone that's been a CPA or a CFO of a company. What better experience that you would have someone come alongside, like what you do with coaching, mm -hmm. is to coach them, not only in their profession, but also in their spiritual journey. It just in life. Yeah. Because, right, you know, I... Yeah, I, if I knew then what I know now, I yeah, it would be it would be different. But yeah. it is life, you know. So um, you, you've got uh, the the mentorship that's going on, and you know that's certainly a non generous contribution or non non financial mm -hmm. contribution. Um, 
But I think in terms of, you know, especially today, you know, kindness and attentiveness, uh, saying please and thank you, and uh, yeah, it, it seems to be in short supply these days. Yeah, and I think what we see in golf, though, which is obviously why it's such a great sport, the whole area of the integrity side, you know, for, mm. you know, with links, you know, it's the whole idea with the eye, you know, the integrity. And uh, what I love about golf is that when my son was growing up playing golf, he learned to say, hello, you know, yeah. hello, Mr. Witt. Yeah. Not hello, John, but hello, Mr. Witt. And, and as he grew up, he learned those things from playing golf and being mm -hmm. around golfers. Yeah. Yeah, just uh, it, it, a lot of courtesy. Mm -hmm. you know, and golf is made up, you know, there's a lot of golf etiquette out there. Yeah. Um, shifting again, because uh, Lynx is expanding and they've got, uh, you mentioned earlier, uh, the women's fellowships. Mm -hmm. Yeah, women, you know, it's, it's uh, unfortunately, you know, golf, you know, has really kind of been geared more towards men. But, we, you know, my wife is a golfer and uh, and women is growing. I mean, obviously with the pandemic, you know, a lot of people figured out, hey, golf is a sport, they can golf. Golf, play. you can still play, right? Yeah, you still so, go put a tee in the ground so and it's play. it's become a very, very popular sport. And what we have uh, started was really be intentional about getting women's fellowships going. And, and once they get going, I mean, I got to tell you, they grow faster than the men's fellowships because women just, they're just born to just gather, you know, and get together. I mean, they, we have a group here uh, at one of our clubs and the women have a Christmas party. It is like everything is to the tens, you know, the yeah. food, the gifts, the clothing. I mean, and, and it's neat. And actually what we've done in some of our clubs is we've actually asked our men and women fellowships to have a Christmas party together. And it's kind of cool to see what's happening is some of the men, women's don't go to their women's fellowship. And some of the men, the wives, men's don't go to the men's fellowship. So there's all of a sudden this community that's happening within the golf club of people meeting other people that say, oh, your wife plays golf? Oh, you know, my wife plays golf? And so it's really the neat, as Lynx players, we try to look at how do we do both men and women and also what we call mixed groups, which are men and women or couples. And then you have some men that are, that are uh, you know, basically bachelors or some women that are, you know, same. And so we don't want to just say couples. We want to create try to create situations, mixed groups too. arrangements. And golf is the commonality. I mean, really, golf is kind of brings us all together. Yeah. And through that, that we all. Golf and relationships. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Well, so there's one other thing I wanted to catch before we wrap, and, and uh, you had mentioned a term that stuck with me. It was God wakes. Mm. Yeah, you know, I think in our lives, right, John, you've experienced too, is that certain, you know, as I go and do th different things, God just shows you as a he God wakes. He shows wink. up. He, he shows yeah, up. He shows up. It's like, wow, look at that. Yeah, and maybe sometimes it could be a challenge or... Uh, and all of a sudden, you run into someone that you haven't seen in a while, whether it's on the golf course and, or wherever it may be, and all of a sudden, that's that one person you needed to hear an encouraging word from, or you needed... Or he just, needed to hear an encouraging word from you. Yeah. It is just amazing how often that happens. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we don't plan it, but it's just there, and, and, and off we go. And, you know, you can look back later, so how, did, how the heck did we end up in the same place at the same time when we started out, you know, X amount of miles away from each other. And that's when God winks and saying, I'm there for you and always be there with you. That's when God winks. Mm -hmm. I like that. Derek, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for everything that you do for Lynx players. Um, it's, it's, an out, uh, it's an outstanding group and it's made a huge difference in my life and I really appreciate you taking the time uh, to come on the show and share what Lynx Players is really all about and tell your story and share your stories of generosity. Very, well, very much appreciate it. pleasure and blessing to be with you, John. Thank all right. You. Thank you. Okay. For those of you that have watched us today, thank you for joining us. If you have a minute or a second even, take uh, some time and be generous and go down and leave us a comment below and push that little subscribe button. If you'd like to connect with other uh, members of the LifeShine community that are practicing a focus of generosity, 
you can join us at www.lifeshine.live. So thanks again for joining us, and may your light continue to shine brighter on your good deeds.